Yo, what is good up guys? Welcome back. In this video, I want to get the first steps out of the way. So in order for the system to work properly, we actually have to equip a first person mesh into our first person arms. Right now, the way the system is set up, we're only equipping a third person mesh. So in order to, to get that to actually work, we need a weapon class with a first person and a third person mesh. So right now, our character is using a blueprint version of a weapon class that we have no means of access to in C++. So what I actually want to do is come over here into this weapon folder and I want to create a C++ based weapon class that we can actually derive those blueprint classes from. I'm going to just call this weapon base. It's going to be an actor class. Right off the bat, I know I don't want this class to tick, so I'm going to delete this tick function. There are some components that we're going to need, but we're going to put them in a protected section. Let me go ahead and say you property this is going to be blueprint. Well, really, it's going to just be edit defaults only. It's going to be a category of weapon. And here it did a float. But what I want to do is actually a class of a U skeletal mesh component. And we want the weapon mesh, but we want it to be underscore first person. So one P for that one. And then let's copy this again. And then let's make a version for the third person mesh. So this will be 3P. And of course, we're going to need getters for these. So up here in this public section, let's create a U function that is blueprint pure. It's going to be in a category of weapon. I'm going to just let that do its thing. I'm going to delete this. Um, we actually want to do a force in line. And we want to return a U skeletal mesh component. And this is saying get weapon mesh. And I'm going to say 1P. And what I wanted to do is return weapon mesh underscore 1P. And then copy this puppy again. And I'm looking here, it doesn't look like I need the forward declare the skeletal mesh. So I'll delete that in a second. But we'll change this to 3P on both sides here. And then we'll just get rid of this uh, class, the forward declaration. There we go. So we have access to a first person mesh and a third person mesh. Now let's go ahead and instantiate these so that we they actually exist on our actual weapon actor, weapon base CPP. And let's go to this uh, constructor here. I'm going to delete this tick function because it's not needed. We want to set this to false. And then we want to set primary actor tick dot be start with tick enable. We want to set that equal to false as well. Then we want to go ahead and set the root component of this object. So we want to set it equal to our third person mesh. Uh, so I'm going to say weapon mesh underscore three P and I want to say create default objects and go ahead and give it the use skeletal mesh as the type and weapon mesh three P as the name. And then for that weapon mesh 3P, we want to set up some values here. We want to set it to where the owner doesn't see it. So we want to say set owner no C equals true. Then we want to say uh, that this weapon mesh will cast shadows. So cast shadow, we want to set this equal to true. Sorry, my keyboard is right underneath my, my mic, so I can't like... I'm typing in a weird position right now. So weapon mesh 3P, we want to go here and say set show or show hidden. What is this? Oh, be cast hidden shadow. So we wanted to cast a hidden shadow since this is going to be hidden to the uh, our first person. Uh, basically, this mesh won't exist if we're the owner of it but we want it to cast a shadow so that we can see the shadows in the dynamic shadows of the weapon so now moving on to the first person we will go ahead and instantiate that and then we want to go ahead and set up the attachment to the root component so set up attachment uh, let's give it the root component and we don't want this to cast a shadow so we'll say cast shadow is equal to false and then we want to say cast hidden shadow because sometimes we will hide this mesh weapon mesh 
uh, be cast hidden shadow. We also want to set that to false. And, and then we also want to set this mesh so that the owner only sees it dot set owner only C or set only owner C to true. What are you doing? Okay, uh, that's weird. So I want to say weapon mesh and we want to set only owner C to true. And then finally, we want to set this mesh to replicate or this actor to replicate. So we'll set that B replicates variable to true. Right now, this is all the setup we need for this weapon base class. So in my reference project, I'm using a soft reference uh, because my the way my system is set up is that there's a buy system and most of my weapons are uh, data assets that are like loaded when they're needed. They're not actually, how can I say it? Like Lyra has a lot of hard references to their objects. Like you can pick them up in the weapon spawner and so on and so forth. So their system is a little bit different than mine. So what we're going to do is set up the equipping and then we'll, we'll close out this video. So let me cancel that. Uh, there's actually a, a class in here called Lyra Equipment Instance. So Lyra Equipment Instance. Uh, so we got the .h and the .cpp right there. So inside of here, uh, inside of this class, this this spawn equipment actors is actually what gets called whenever you overlap a weapon pickup or something like that in the world. So right here, if we look at this function, basically what happens is we get uh, the attached target and here it's attaching to the mesh, the root component. And here the attached target is the third person mesh. So for us, we want to keep that the same because the third person mesh, if you remember how we set this up, and that's why I set it up this way uh, inside of the, let me close some of these classes that we don't need. Inside of the CPP of the weapon base, we set the third person mesh as the root component of the entire actor. That means whenever this actor gets attached to the mesh, the third person mesh will be snapped to the proper space uh, of the third person character mesh. So that's why we set the third person mesh uh, up in the weapon as the root component. And basically all of this can remain the same. But one thing that we need to change is whenever uh, we, we are finally done equipping. So basically whenever this weapon begin begins play, because the way that this system is set up and I haven't found a solution to make this more optimized. I am uh, like looking for it, like trying to think of a way to make it more optimized. But the way that this system works is whenever you swap your weapons, it destroys the weapon, but it keeps a reference to the equipment actor inside of your uh, actual inventory, uh, the quick bar component in the inventory manager. It keeps a reference of what that equipment uh, like instance is, but it actually destroys the, the actor that gets spawned. So. Uh, say I had two weapons and whenever I swap a weapon, it'll destroy the actor that is the weapon in my hand currently and spawn the next weapon actor into my hands. This means that begin play will run every time you swap to the weapon that you're swapping to. So this will fire every time. So in begin play, what we want to do is take our first person mesh and snap it to the the position that we want to snap it to for us, the client. So the first thing we want to do is get a reference to our pawn owner. So let's go ahead and say a pawn star is our pawn owner. And this is equal to a cast to a pawn using our get owner of this actor. And uh, what we want to do is make sure that we're not doing this on a dedicated server. Um, so let's say if we are, if the, if this actor's net mode, so get net mode is not equal to net mode dedicated server, it's not equal to that. We want to go ahead and snap that first person mesh to our first person arms 
at the socket that we so deem is the correct socket. So um, what we'll do inside of here is check if our character uh, is valid. So check if we have a Lyra, a Lyra character. So I'm gonna say if const a Lyra character, and let's get a pointer to that. And let's call this character. If this is equal to a cast to a Lyra character, if I think it's up, there we go. Uh, using our pawn owner. If that is a valid cast there, we want to say uh, our weapon mesh one, uh, the first person weapon mesh we want to attach to a component. And the opponent that we want to attach to, the in character, the in parent is the character's first person mesh. So let's say character get first person mesh. And the attachment rules, we want to say F attachment rules. Uh, attachment transform rules, we want to say snap to target, including scale. And then the actual attachment socket, uh, we want to make this something that we can edit per weapon because uh, depending on the weapon, we can attach it to the left hand or the right hand or the foot, whatever we want to do. Uh, so let's just make this more modular. We'll say attach socket and then inside of our Header, let's go ahead and make a protected U property. And this is going to be blueprint read only, edit defaults only, and category weapon is fine. And let's go ahead and make a F name and call it a task socket. And by default, I want to set this to what I know my weapon attachment name is. So it's VB weapon and i believe this is lowercase weapon underscore r uh, i'll explain more about why i chose to use virtual bones so right here what we're doing is whenever this actor is spawned into the world it will attach itself to our first person mesh using this attached socket and these transform rules we can actually test that if we wanted to but we would have to set up a a completely new uh, weapon class and weapon actor and uh, place it in the world. So let's go ahead and just save that for the next video. So if you guys are ready for that, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.